Here's example three of applications of trig. So if you want to copy of this worksheet to follow along with, check the video description. There's a link in there. You can click that link and get a copy of this. So example three, to determine the height of a building, two measurements are taken at a distance of 100 feet apart. If the first angle of elevation is 50 degrees and the second angle of elevation is 28 degrees, uh, what is the height of the building? Okay. So uh, like always, first we'll draw a picture to illustrate what's happening. Okay, so we're talking about uh, a building, so let's draw a little building here. And that works. Okay. And um, two measurements are taken at a distance of 100 feet apart. So let's put the measurements over here. So we'll draw ground over this way, right angle here, measurement here, and a measurement here. Okay. So picture is not to scale. Okay, so here's one measurement, and uh, the angle of elevation is 50 degrees. So this right here is 50 degrees. Okay, so remember, angle of elevation, uh, like we had in example one, is just, uh, so we're talking about the angle of elevation from the point of measurement to the top of the building, is what that means. So here's the first point of measurement, here's the top of the building, so the angle of elevation is this angle right here, and we're given it 50 degrees. And the second one is 28 degrees, so here's our other measurement point, so we'll Put a triangle there, or fill in that side of the triangle. And then this right here is 28 degrees. Okay, how do we know this one's 50 degrees, that one's 28 degrees? Well, uh, notice this angle is larger than this angle. Okay, because this point of measurement is closer, uh, this angle is going to be larger. So the closer you get, uh, the larger an angle you're going to have down here. Okay, so this one has to be 50 degrees, this one has to be 28, because uh, this one's closer, so it's bigger. Okay, so we're also told that uh, the measurements are 100 feet apart. Okay, two measurements are taken at a distance of 100 feet apart. So here's first measurement, second measurement. Uh, there is 100 feet between them, is what we're told. And we want to know uh, how high is the building. Okay, so we'll call this H. Okay. Now we're dealing with right triangles here, so uh, we're probably going to have to know some more about the sides. So let's just call this X. Because we don't know what this is, okay, we don't know, this is the first measurement here, but we don't know how far away from the building it was, uh, it was taken. But that doesn't really matter. Uh, we can still use this anyway. So we'll call this x. Now let's go ahead and get started um, with the math part. So notice there are actually two triangles here, two right triangles, right? So here's one right triangle here, okay, with uh, this is the hypotenuse, and there's another right triangle with this is the hypotenuse. So the whole thing here is also another right triangle and we're going to use uh, both of those right triangles and the tangent function. So first, let's just focus on this triangle here. So if we focus on this, we could say tangent of 50 degrees equals h divided by x. A tangent of 50 degrees equals h divided by x. Okay, there's not a whole lot we can do with that now, so let's just leave that as it is for now. And let's now look at the larger triangle. So just ignore the 50 degrees and just focus on the 28 degrees. So if we look at this uh, whole entire large triangle, tangent of 28 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent. Okay? So this is the opposite. We're just looking at the big right triangle. So forget the 50 degrees, forget this side right here. Okay? Forget the hypotenuse of the smaller right triangle. Just focus on the big right triangle on the outside. So tangent of 28 degrees is opposite over adjacent. And what's the adjacent? Well, it's 100 plus x, right? So opposite is h, the adjacent is 100 plus x. So then what we could say is tangent of 28 degrees equals h over 100 plus x. Okay, so tangent of 28 degrees equals the opposite, which is h, divided by the adjacent, which is 100 plus x. Okay, if this is 100 and this is x, then the entire thing is 100 plus x. Okay, so tangent of 28 degrees is opposite over adjacent, so that's what we have there. Okay, so um, let's forget about that picture for now, and we'll just focus on this. So tangent of 50 degrees is h over x. Tangent of 28 degrees is h over 100 plus x. So what can we do with that? Well, basically, what we have here is uh, two equations with two variables, h and x, and we want to solve for h. We want to know what's the height of the building. Okay, so there's probably a couple different ways we can go, but let's, let's do this. Uh, so it'll, it, maybe it'll be the simplest. Uh, for this equation here, let's just multiply both sides by x. So then we have x times tangent of 50 degrees equals h. Okay. 
And for this equation here, let's multiply both sides by 100 plus x. So for this equation, we're going to have 100 plus x, that whole quantity. Be careful about that. We have to have parentheses around that because we're multiplying the entire thing, okay? The entire expression 100 plus x times tangent of 28 degrees equals h. Okay, so here, if we multiply both sides by 100 plus x, this is what we get. And now, let's go ahead and distribute this tangent of 28 degrees. So if we distribute the tangent of 28 degrees, what we get is 100 tangent of 28 degrees plus x times the tangent of 28 degrees equals h, okay? Now, how does that help us? Well, notice, what do we have here? h equals some stuff right here. h equals some other stuff right here. So if this stuff equals h and this other stuff equals h, then this stuff and this other stuff have to equal each other. Okay, that's just transitive property right there. These two different things equal h, so these two different things have to equal each other. So let's go ahead and set them equal to each other, and then we'll see what we can do with that. So then what we get is uh, x times the tangent of 50 degrees. Okay, we get that from here. And then that equals this other stuff that equals h, which is 100 tangent 28 degrees plus x times the tangent of 28 degrees. Okay. So notice here, this is just one equation with one variable, x. Okay, the h has been eliminated, and what we're going to do is solve for x here. Now you might be wondering, why are we leaving all the tangents here? Uh, we could toss them into a calculator, but it's best to avoid that until the very end, uh, because if we have to put these into a calculator, or if we do put these into a calculator, then we're going to have to round out to a few decimal places, and we don't want to approximate uh, earlier than we have to. So tangent of 50 degrees, tangent of 28 degrees, those are not rational numbers. Uh, they're going to have infinite uh, decimal uh, parts. So we don't want to round off to any number of decimals. Uh, we want to avoid that if we can, and we can avoid it. So it might make the algebra kind of messy. Um, but if we have all these decimal places flying around all over the place, it's, that wouldn't be that much better. Um, plus, this is good practice with algebra. So we'll leave this just with all the tangents in here until the very end, and then we'll toss everything into a calculator. Anyway, uh, so we want to solve for x. So we'll get everything with an x on one side, everything without an x on the other. So basically, you just subtract x tangent 28 degrees from both sides. So minus x tangent 28 degrees. So then on the left-hand side, what we get is x times the tangent of 50 degrees minus x times the tangent of 28 degrees. Uh, equals what's left over here, just 100 tangent 28 degrees. Okay. So on the left-hand side, we just have x tangent 50 degrees minus x tangent 28 degrees. And then on the right-hand side, uh, these cancel, so we just have 100 tangent 28 degrees. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, now, what do we have here? x times this thing minus x times this other thing. Okay. Now, it might look like we can combine these into one expression somehow, but we really can't because tangent of 50 degrees, tangent of 28 degrees, uh, there's no nice way to combine these two. We could try some and difference formulas, but that would, uh, it just, it'd be too much. It'd be overkill. It'd be really messy. Uh, it wouldn't really help us a whole lot. So what we could do is factor out the common factor of x. Okay, so we have x times this minus x times that. So let's just factor out the x. So then we have x times tangent of 50 degrees minus tangent of 28 degrees still equals 100 times tangent of 28 degrees. Okay. Now, uh, we can divide both sides by this uh, nasty expression here, tangent of 50 degrees minus tangent of 28 degrees. Uh, if we divide both sides by that, then we'll just have x by itself over here. So if we do that, uh, let's come over here and write that. We're kind of out of room over there. So then x equals... So divide both sides by tan 50 degrees minus tan 28 degrees, and um, we're going to have this guy right here divided by this stuff right here. So on the top, we just have 100 tan 28 degrees. And then on the bottom, we have tan 50 degrees minus tan 28 degrees. Okay, so again, all we did was just divide both sides of the equation by this expression here in the brackets. That's all we did. So uh, now we have this. Now we're not quite done yet, right? So, uh, and also we don't want to toss this into a calculator because we don't want to find x, right? We want to find h. So remember, um, 
blah, blah, blah. What is the height of the building? Okay, we want to find the height of the building. We want to find h, not x. Well, we have this nasty expression for x right here. So can we use that to get h? Yeah, we can use this uh, equation right here. h equals x times the tangent of 50 degrees. So what we can do is just take this nasty expression here, multiply it by the tangent of 50 degrees, and that'll give us our h. And that's what we want to toss into a calculator. Okay, so if this is x, then h is this mess times the tangent of 50 degrees. Okay, h is x times tangent of 50 degrees. This is x, so take this whole thing, multiply by tangent of 50 degrees, and then we get uh, h. So uh, let's set aside some space over here, so everything doesn't start running together. And then what we get is h, okay, so h equals x times tangent of 50 degrees, okay? And we now know that x equals this mess right here. So we'll substitute that in there, and we get h equals uh, 100 times tangent of 28 degrees uh, divided by tangent of 50 degrees minus tangent of 28 degrees. Okay, this is the expression we have for x, and then we're multiplying that by tangent of 50 degrees. Okay, now this is the mess we want to toss into a calculator. So one downside of holding off until the very end is you might have a messy expression to put in there, but it's really good to get, uh, to put into the calculator, I mean, but it's really good to get practice with that too. And again, uh, the priority should be not to round uh, too soon. Okay, so make sure that we're in degree mode because we're dealing with degrees, not radians. So we have 100 times tangent of uh, 28 degrees, and that's being divided by uh, the tangent of 50 degrees minus the tangent of 28 degrees, okay? And then we're gonna multiply that whole thing, oops, by tangent of 50 degrees, okay? So uh, we'll put this in with the uh, pretty print as it's called on the TI-89, it's a nice feature that it has that. Um, so notice 100 tangent 28 over tan 50 minus tan 28 times the tangent of 50. Okay. So that's the expression we put in, so we just want to uh, double check that if we can. And notice it converts to sines and cosines, that's just something goofy that the TI-89 does every now and then. Uh, but we can get an approximate value, which is kind of what we want, and we get 96.0037-ish, okay. if we round out to four decimal places. Why four? We weren't really told how far to round out. See, it just says what is the height of the building. So four is a good place to round out to. So then h is approximately equal to uh, 96.0037 feet. Okay. Approximately 96.0037 feet. Okay, so that's it for example three of applications of trig.